Okay, so this is going to be a different style video than what I usually film on this channel. But in the effort to try out new things and uh, answer a lot of the questions that most people ask me when I tell them that I left the first world for the third world, that's kind of what I'm going to go through and uh, very casually. So pardon me if I look down at my notes uh, a couple times. Um, I, I have some questions from a lot of people. I mean, I'm just going to walk through my story from working a nine to five job in the United States all the way to owning a couple different businesses, online businesses here in Latin America, where I spend most of my time. It all begins with uh, how I quit my job. And then we'll get to why I left the United States. And then we'll get to what has uh, really encouraged me to stay here in Latin America, not just come here, but also stay here. So let's first start with that first step that I think is really important if you want to become free. And that is quitting your nine to five job where you have no control over your salary, you have no control over your time, someone else manages it. I realized that. I, I realized early on when I was just 21, 22, and in my first few years working full time, that that was not the way of life that I had always wanted. I had always wanted to become free. I wanted to control my own life. Um, and I knew that in the job that I had, no no shame on them, no, no negative thing to say about them, but I wasn't going to achieve the things that I really wanted to achieve. In. And the reason that I identified like that gap between what I was doing and what I wanted uh, was I wrote my own obituary in 2021. And during that exercise, it really showed me that everything that I was doing in that moment in my life was not going to get me to the life that I wanted people to write about in my obituary, in my eulogy. So why wait? Why, why should I wait to make huge changes in order to start living the life that I really wanted to live? Because I only have 90 years on this planet. I would say that the obituary was the main, was the main driver in me finally coming to the realization that a nine to five job would not satisfy. But most people ask, how did you have the confidence to quit? And there, there are two things here. Uh, I'm lucky. So I, I was part of a fellowship program where I was working at the time in the Midwest, United States. And at the end of those two years, I could either accept a promotion from my company. I got a raise and a promotion from my company. I could either do that or I could quit and go find another job or do whatever I want. But because that program ended, I was able to rethink things. Nobody else has that. Nobody else has that opportunity two years into their career to rethink where their life is going, the direction that they're heading, uh, what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And I had that and I'm very lucky. So at the end of those two years, I thought to myself, hmm, should I accept this 40% raise? Should I accept this promotion in title? Is it going to get me closer to the goals that I wrote about in my obituary? And the answer to those questions were no, no. If I had been in that job for five more years, 10 more years, and then looked back on my life, I think I would have been ashamed and disappointed in myself. For a lot of people, that's a great move, fine. But for me, as an entrepreneur, as someone who wants to see the world, who wants multiple languages, who wanted to own homes around the world, who wanted to build a legacy and generational wealth, all these different things that I wanted to do, what I was doing at that moment would not lead me there. And even if I had spent one more year there, three more years, it was going to get me farther away from my goals not closer to the nature of that fellowship program coupled with the obituary allowed me to say, I'm all in, uh, what do I have to lose? If everything goes poorly I can just go find another job. Um, and luckily also I had a great safety net. So my parents, God bless them. I love them both. And I know that even if I failed, even if everything had gone so poorly and I lost all my money, didn't make a single dime, I knew that I had a couch to sleep on. And I knew that my friends would also back me up in that same way. So what's the worst that could happen? I go sleep on a couch for a few months. Not that bad. And that gave me the confidence to say, okay, I have these skills. Let's turn this into a service. I know a lot of people. And I just reach out to them and say, hey, I'm starting this thing. Don't know really what it is, but I know I can help. That was the start of a, a beautiful adventure three years in. And I'm absolutely loving what I'm doing. At that time, I turned a lot of digital marketing skills into a digital marketing agency. I worked with a lot of people on creating websites, doing content, writing blogs, email marketing. Now I'm a lot more focused in that I just do content. I write SEO, optimized blogs. I do email marketing and video. 
uh, for a lot of people. But that was how I turned some skills that I already had into a business. So that brings us to the second section, why I left uh, the United States. And this was all in 2021. So wrote my obituary in 2021, put my job in 2021. I uh, nomaded across the United States in 2021, sleeping on couches of friends while I was trying to build my business. And then I left the United States in the end of 2021. I didn't study abroad and I didn't travel post-grad. Uh, I didn't have time. I started my job three days after I graduated in 20. 19. So I felt like I was missing something. And because I was now working on the internet, I was, I was working with clients where I was based, but on my computer, I wasn't meeting with them every day. I realized that I could do that same exact job in Medellin, Colombia, or Madrid, Spain, or Bangkok, Thailand. It didn't matter. One of the main motivators for that first trip was as I was growing my business, and I was lucky right off the bat to, to make uh, a decent amount of money quickly. I wanted to reduce my cost of living to give me a little bit more runway, uh, because if you're stuck in the United States and you're stuck in New York City or LA or Miami, where you're paying exorbitant costs, everything costs a lot, rent, food, uh, going to the gym even costs a lot of money. So I wanted to reduce my cost of living while making what I was making. But the easiest way to reduce your expenses is by going somewhere where everything is cheaper. That was the main motivation for that first trip. It was supposed to be a three month trip. I came here to Medellin, Colombia. I was supposed to go to uh, Costa Rica and then Panama, each for a month and then back to the United States to start a new lease, but it didn't work out that way. Okay, so this brings us to this third section of why Latin America. I mean, there are a billion places in the world. Why did I choose Latin America over Europe, over Africa, over the Middle East, over Southeast Asia? But the reasons for coming to Latin America are different for the reasons that I have now stayed in Latin America. The reasons for originally coming to Latin America was the time zones, the proximity to the United States, uh, the cost of living, of course, and the fact that I had a little tiny background in Spanish. And that, that first one, time zones, the reason I wanted similar time zones to the United States is because I was working with people in the United States. I didn't want to go to Bali. I didn't want to go to Thailand. And I have to wake up at 3 a.m. every single day in order to meet with my client to the United States on a 12 hour difference, uh, a 14 hour difference. So that was going to be really inconvenient. And if I were in Latin America, pretty much the exact same time zones as uh, what I had in the United States. Cost of living far lower in Latin America, especially if you get outside the cities uh, than the United States. So I was able to reduce my cost of living significantly. That was a big difference for me as I was trying to build my business, save a little money so that I could build that business without so much stress. Now, the other thing about Spanish in this region is that from Mexico all the way down to Antarctica, there's pretty much just one language spoken. And that's a that's an incredible benefit and an advantage that most people don't talk about in Latin America. If you learn Spanish, you can move from country to country to country to country to country in Latin America and get along with every single local. It's different in Europe. You're either speaking English that whole time, which obviously I, I understand, uh, but you're not going to be able to connect with the locals who don't know English as well as you do. And you would also have to uh, learn Slavic languages, which are extremely difficult for Americans, uh, British, Canadians, Australians. You would have to learn Polish and German and French and Spanish and Portuguese and Italian. And that's a, that's a lot more difficult than uh, people make it out to be. Same thing in Southeast Asia. Thai is almost impossible for us to learn. Uh, Laos and Cambodian, all these different languages. So that was a huge advantage in Latin America that I underestimated when I first came here. And because I had a little bit of background, uh, that was really cool that I got to learn it very quickly. Obviously, my my girlfriend is Colombian, so um, I learned very quickly through her because I had. To. So, like I said, uh, my reasons for coming to Latin America are very different than the reasons for me staying here. I'm happier, healthier, wealthier. And I feel much freer, uh, which is a really liberating feeling. I can get into the specifics about why I feel those different things and, and the reasons why I chose Colombia to spend a lot of my time um, in another video. So that is my story from USA Weiji, a nine to fiver, to an online entrepreneur here in Latin America. And I'm just loving it. So I hope you guys appreciated this video. It's a lot more like off the cuff, casual. Comment down below if you have any questions about my story. Also, 
that helps me create more videos in the future. So if you have something you want to know about my story, about what I'm doing in Latin America, about my favorite countries, about how to reduce your tax, how to reduce your cost of living, what is the cost of living, all these different things I can talk about. So if you're interested in relocating abroad and evaluating your different options and avoiding mistakes, living in a really shitty place, uh, you might want to check that out and uh, subscribe to the Freedom Files while you're at it.